going on guys i hope you're all doing well today so what you just heard was a full mix and some riffs and some shreddy crap with uh, uh my new pack that i just made for the tone x and it's of the mr scary modded badlander and the link is below in the description if you want to get that for your tone x pedal i also did the same captures for the quad cortex and there's a link in the description for that as well. So whether you play Quad Cortex or Tonex, you can get these for either one of those units. And uh, I really think you're going to like these a lot. They came out really good, and the feel is really good on these. Really full, fat, aggressive, saturated, lots of gain, lots of awesome uh, different gain structures and gain settings for you. Now for the intro and the riffs, I use the higher gain settings on the uh, presets, but you also have presets with lower gain settings that you can choose from. So just choose the ones that work best for you. I also have dual cab captures in there. What you heard were the single cab captures, but I paired the Zilla cab 
with my uh, Mesa cab and some of the captures. So you have a really unique sound with the dual cabs because I'm pairing the DV77 in my Zilla with the Vintage 30 in the Mesa cab and it just makes for a really nice big sound. And man, that Mr. Scary mod for the uh, Badlander is a freaking game changer. It, it took that amp from, it's about to go on reverb to putting it right back on my shelf and loving the hell out of it. That amp is amazing now. So I was glad to capture it for you guys so that you can have it for either your Quad Cortex or your Tonex pedal. And by the way, I want to thank everybody for purchasing all of the captures and presets and profile packs that I have on my website. I really appreciate you guys very much. And thanks so much for the kind words and the great feedback that I've been getting from you. All that stuff really means a lot to me, and it does help keep the lights on here on the channel. Because, uh, as you may or may not know, YouTube does not pay that much. So I have to do all this extra stuff just to keep things going here, and I really appreciate the support. Alright, so I believe this is Riffs and Responses number 29. So... Uh, I wanted to start this one off a little different. Obviously, I already did that with the uh, the mix and the riffs and stuff, but I wanted to talk to you guys about something that's been kind of bugging me for a while, and it's about time I said something about it. I know other channels have been talking about it, and it's something that's uh, that I've been dealing with for probably the last year and a half off and on on Facebook, and that's basically, you know, kind of like the... <laughs> A lot of people are calling it the toxicity or, uh, you know, just issues with some of the groups on Facebook regarding guitar, uh, guitar gear, you know, like heavy metal guitar gear stuff, you know. And uh, I, I have dealt with it for a while now, and there's, there's, there's a time when I posted some of my videos in there, and uh, it just got to the point where I was just, <laughs> you know, some of the moderators in the, some of these groups are just... <sighs> I'll just put it to you this way. I'm trying to keep it as professional as I can here. Not very nice people. Uh, I'll just put it to you that way. Dealt with a lot of negativity. And, uh, you know, there's times they they would, you know, you put something in there and then they, next thing you know, your your video was removed or your your post was removed by a moderator. And you're like, why? And it's so weird because some of these guys, I ask them like, dude, why, why are you taking my videos down? I'm just posting a a link in there and I you know I don't understand what the deal is and then they just say oh you're spamming our group and and stuff and I'm like dude how am I spamming your group and they're like well you you got to contribute I'm like that is my contribution you know the thing that really bugs me about some of these groups is guys can post cell phone videos of them playing their amp in their bedroom and it's clipping and the sound is terrible and they're just sitting there jamming on their amp and they're like yeah check out my amp and this and that but myself or other guys from youtube can post a professionally shot edited and produced video in there and we're spamming the group i just don't understand it i mean the hypocrisy is just insane you know i mean what am i supposed to do just post a cell phone video and not utilize all the stuff I have here and dumb my shit down so that it fits within the community standards of their stupid group. I just don't understand that at all. I mean, there's nothing wrong with people posting cell phone videos in the group. I'm not knocking that. I mean, keep doing it. I mean, it's cool that you're sharing your experience with people, but I'm sure all of those people that post the cell phone videos, if they had the production capabilities that a lot of us YouTube guys had, they would use all of that stuff to post their videos instead. But they're just doing what they can with what they have. And guess what? So am I, and so are the other YouTubers. I mean, like I said, I have all this stuff. Why would I come down here and just shoot it with my cell phone when I can just hit a few switches, everything's mic'd up and ready to go. I can just shoot a video, edit it real quick, and then upload it to my YouTube channel and share the link in you know one of those Facebook groups. But when I do that, uh, you know, I get the moderators, they either remove the video, or they'll just talk shit uh, in the comments section on my video in the group and lead by a horrible example. And then all their minions come in and pile on and say a bunch of crappy comments on top of it. And I get a lot of positive comments too, but it just be creates this big sandbox fight. And it's just stupid. It just creates all this negativity 
around my post or other people's posts. I've seen it happen to other YouTubers as well. And I just think it's really stupid, you know. And uh, after a while, I just got sick of it and I just quit posting in there. And it's not because I got butt hurt or got my feelings hurt or anything like that. I mean, I got thick skin. I'm in my 50s, you know. I've been around a while and I have a freaking uh, business that I've ran for 24 years. So uh, it's not a big deal, but it's just a waste of time for me to post my video in there just to have the moderators post a bunch of garbage on there or remove it. And like I said, have their minions come in and just add on to the crappy comments, you know, and it just, it just, you know, creates a negative situation. So I just got sick of it and I haven't posted videos in there in a while because it just isn't worth my time. Now, I'm not the only one who's said stuff about this. I mean, there's plenty of other channels that have talked about this over the last probably several months to a year, year and a half. And, uh, you know, it's just become a thing where a lot of guys are just getting sick of it and, just tired of the negativity. I mean, what are we supposed to do? Say, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to spam your group with well-produced content shot with uh, very expensive cameras and good lighting and, and properly mic'd up cabinets. I mean, I just don't understand why these guys have such a problem with us posting quality content in their group. You know, I mean, again, there's nothing wrong with using cell phone videos or iPad videos or anything like that. It's cool. Go ahead, do what you got to do. I'm not shaming anybody for doing that. Not everybody's going to spend the kind of money that we spend on our stuff. But like I said, if I have the ability to just come down here and turn everything on and shoot a video, it would behoove me to use all that stuff and just give you the best quality content that I can. And I don't think I should get penalized for it. And I certainly don't think I should have people, especially the moderators, talking shit right underneath the, my post in the group. I mean, these people are leading by example and they're doing a really bad job of it. You know, it just shows the kind of shitty attitudes that a lot of these guys have. To be honest with you, I don't really need Facebook to promote my channel. I really don't. I mean, Google owns YouTube and it's the best search algorithm out there. So I'm perfectly fine with just posting my stuff here. And I, I, you know, I don't think it makes a big difference whether or not I share the videos in groups on Facebook or not. I, if, if at all, it probably bumps it up maybe a couple percentage points. Maybe I get maybe 5% more views or whatever, but uh, so it's just not worth my time do, dealing with all that crap just for, you know, maybe 20 or 30 more views on a video. So with all that being said, let me clarify something here, and I think I speak for the rest of us on YouTube as well. Uh, we don't share our stuff in the groups to promote our channels. We share our stuff in there to contribute to the group, and that is our version of contribution. I mean, what would you rather do? see a post from me with some words and a picture or some bedroom footage with an iPad mic, or would you rather see quality content with all of the stuff that we use in our studios? And again, I'm not knocking anybody that does the other things. It's perfectly fine and understandable why they do those things. I'm just saying if we have the ability to give you a high quality version of content, why wouldn't we do that for you? And again, that's our contribution to these groups and for moderators to see that and just crap all over it is is just ridiculous it's immature and it's just complete douchebaggery you know and like i said a lot of us are just sick of it and what's cool about all this is that perfect timing something happened about a week ago john simons from sonic drive studios started his own facebook page because he equally was sick of all the crap as well and the name of his Facebook page is Rock and Metal Amps, Pedals, and Gear. And I'll post a link below in the description of this video if you want to go join the group. And the other thing is, is John actually invited myself and a bunch of other YouTubers to be moderators over there. And he wanted to start a group that had a more positive environment with a chill vibe in it where people can just post away and uh, keep things positive and not have all this negative stuff going on there with all these sandbox fights and people just posting stuff like overdrive pedals suck fight me and you, you know you got all these dumb posts that just they don't help anybody and the thing is is when you allow people to post videos whether it's high quality low quality medium quality or whatever 
no matter what, everybody gets to choose whether or not they want to watch those videos, and there's always something we can get out of them, no matter what the quality level is. And having the ability to share that kind of information with everybody at any level is definitely very helpful for everybody, because at that point, you're not having all these moderators like you do in some of these other groups that just filter out all this great content, and people miss out on all this great information that could have been really helpful for them. So I think it's a really cool idea that John did that and I'm uh, actually honored that he reached out to me and asked me to be part of the group and be one of the moderators and uh, so far it's been growing quickly I think it's over 2,000 members at this point and it's growing I, I keep getting notifications all day long every day it's about someone else wanting to join the group so I think there's a lot of people that are looking for a more positive chill place to hang out and just share things and read about things check out videos and not have all this great information filtered away from them by some people who just want to have this Gestapo view on things and uh, blocking great content from the group and it's also a place where youtubers can share their stuff no matter what level they're at as well and like I said if you don't want to watch it then just don't keep scrolling and check out something else not a big deal no one's forcing you to watch anything but they're certainly not taking options away from you either that way you get to choose what you want to engage with and uh, I really think it's a great idea so in the description of this video I posted a link to John's video where he announced him starting this whole Facebook group, why he did it, and he also mentioned all the names of the people that are going to be moderating over there as well. He gave some really nice shout outs to all the channels, including mine, who are going to be part of it, and I really appreciated that very much. I'll just leave it up to him to take care of the rest of the details because he handled it perfectly, and I couldn't have said it better myself. So go ahead and click on that link in the description of this video and check out his uh, announcement of that, and you'll get the rest of the details and I hope to see you guys over at the group. Again, so far it's been really cool and uh, there's a lot of great information being shared over there. And it's finally nice for me to be able to share all my videos in that group without worrying about having uh, a moderator take the video down for arbitrary reasons, you know, and it's, it's just, <laughs> it's kind of refreshing. So I'm looking forward to sharing more videos with you guys over there and interacting with you guys in that group. So come one come all you're all welcome to come over there and i hope you guys enjoy the group all right so now let's get started with some of the comments this first comment is from my kemper player first impressions video and this is from k hall 187 he says too little too late from kemper for me i had the stage but ended up going qc and it's so much more usable happy for kemper but until they work on their ux and ease of use I don't see myself switching from QC anytime soon. Well, thanks for commenting. I really appreciate it. And I'm glad you watched the video. And I appreciate you sharing your thoughts on uh, the video. And, you know, I understand where you're coming from. I mean, a lot of people uh, have been waiting for Kemper to come up with something newer and smaller and more portable and this and that. And they were also hoping that Kemper would come up with something that had a better interface with, on it as well. And, uh, you know, with, with this unit, I mean, obviously there's really no interface on it. I mean, it's pretty much use the app or you know, kind of fiddle with the knobs on the unit, but uh, there's not a lot you could do on the unit itself. So I get the frustration with some people, you know, I think for what it is, the Kemper player is very good, but if you have a quad cortex already, I don't see a switching from that to this, you know. Um, I think in some ways it's a step down because uh, the QC just definitely has a lot going for it with um, the effects and, uh, you know, as far as the uh, profiling goes, it's definitely a lot more uh, consistent, and I think it's a lot more accurate in some ways as well. But I'm hoping that in the future, in the near future, Kemper will come up with a new unit that actually profiles better and more consistently and has a much better interface on it. I don't know why they haven't come up with that yet because i mean that's like a blatantly obvious thing with kemper right now is their interface is honestly it's, it's not that good you know and i'm being nice uh honestly i think it's terrible the interface is terrible the app's great but the interface on the units are is just terrible and the profiling definitely needs an upgrade and it needs to be updated but um i still think that the Kemper player is tempting to a lot of people in the modeling world and they want to try some profiles because there are a lot of good profiles out there. There really are. 
I've made some. I'm sure there's plenty of other websites you could go to to get some great profiles. Um, so, yeah, I just think it's great and it's more affordable. And for someone that's going to take a leap from a $1,600 unit that they've owned for a while that's just a modeler, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's tough for them to go, well, I'm going to spend $2,300 on a, a different unit or whatever, but 700, that's pretty tempting, you know, and it does have great effects, really good effects. So I think a lot of people are going to take a plunge and go from modeling to the Kemper just to try it out. And I think it's, uh, definitely worth a try for a lot of people. So we'll see what, uh, the future holds for Kemper. But like I said, honestly, what I'm hoping for is a new unit with a better interface and a much better profiling algorithm. So we'll see what happens in the future. Okay, this next comment is from Caddy's Jam Cave and he said, hey man, totally unrelated question to your video, so my apologies. Uh, he says, do you think a Mesa dual rectifier sounds the same as a 5150? I'll rephrase. Do you think it's dumb to suggest a dual rectifier sounds the same as a 5150? Curious. Well, thanks for commenting. Uh, I think you're referring to Glenn Fricker's video he did several days ago when he was uh, saying that the dual rectifier sounded pretty much exactly like the 5150, or at least he said they were so close that most people wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Um, I, I don't know. I don't, I'm definitely not going to call Glenn Fricker dumb, but uh, I, I mean, he's, he's a smart guy. I mean, he's a very good engineer. But I can tell you this, I honestly think in a blind test, I can tell the difference, especially if I was playing through both amps, between a 5150 and a dual rec. A dual rec is pretty flubby and fizzy. It's kind of what they're known for. It's pretty obvious. Everybody knows that. Where the 5150, especially if we're talking about the OG, was tighter and more aggressive and less fizzy than the dual rectifier. And I just think that the, the 5150 is honestly a better sounding amplifier. I mean, dual recs, don't get me wrong, they're cool and everything, but there's definitely a bit of an old school sound to them. And that tubby, loose low end is very apparent, very obvious. And uh, that fizzy top end is also very obvious. And it has that uh that specific voicing to it as well that sounds a little classic rockish to me where the 5150 has it's not modern modern like you know like the stealth but it's definitely a more modern sounding amplifier and i, I honestly think that your hands uh should have some say in that as well we listen with our hands not just our ears so i think that as soon as i played through it my hands would tell me which one was which very easily but I still think it's a pretty obvious difference between the two. Glenn concentrates a lot on how do things sound in a mix because typically he's coming from a mixing engineer's standpoint, you know, not really a guitar player's standpoint. I'm coming from a guitar player's standpoint. To me, I don't really care about how things sound in a mix and all that kind of stuff. All I care about is how does it sound to me in the room? or mic'd up with my in-ears on, and how does it feel, and how does it respond to how I play, and uh, how does it take a boost pedal, and you know, all that kind of stuff. That's what matters to me. And as long as those things work for me on an amplifier, I don't give a shit how it sounds in a mix, because that's not my problem. That's a mixing engineer's problem. So as long as I have a good amp tone, not a shitty amp tone that needs to be fixed in a studio. I'm not saying that. There's a difference, you know. But if I have a good amp tone and I love how it sounds and I love how it feels, when I go in a studio and record with it, it's the mixing engineer's job to make that sit in a mix properly. But he doesn't even know what he's going to do with it until he gets down to final mix. That's when he starts kind of doing the high and low cuts and maybe pulling that 4K down in a pin drop and finding that sweet spot where it's really annoying and then just pulling that stuff down by two or three decibels and all that kind of stuff. But we don't worry about that until then. All we care about is I want good guitar tone that he knows he can work with when he you know, does the final mix on the album. So there's two schools of thought here. He, like I said, is coming from a mixing engineer standpoint. I'm coming from a guitar player standpoint. So you always got to keep that stuff in mind when you watch videos that he does, because that's usually where he's coming from. And I respect that. 
and there's nothing wrong with that but just remember if you're a guitar player the main thing you should be concerned about is what matters to you and when you go in a studio as long as you got good tone a guy like glenn can take it and work you know with any mix as long as he's got good uh tone to start with so again i think they sound quite a bit different but i'm speaking as a guitar player not a mix engineer all right this next comment is from the video i just posted the other day about uh kemper needs to update their uh profiling algorithm he says i hate to say it but i i think the reason is that it can't really be done with the current hardware he is an amazing innovator and developer and has clearly poured his soul into this effort and produced incredible updates. If it could be done, he would have already done it. So he's talking about Chris Kemper and uh, he's saying that the, uh, the hardware is the issue and that's why the uh, profiling algorithm has not been updated because the hardware couldn't handle it or something along those lines. I don't know, maybe he's right, maybe he's not. I don't know, we're all kind of guessing here, but to me, it just seems like it would be a software update. You know, I mean, how come you could do a software update where you, where you get a whole bunch of new reverbs or a bunch of new overdrive pedals or, you know, even the, the modeling, you know, that he, he just put in there for the tone stack and, you know, for liquid profiles. I mean, I don't know why you can do all those things, but you can't create a new profiling algorithm that has more sounds that go through and analyzing the amp would be updated and upgraded and all that kind of stuff. I'm not an engineer. I don't know how all that stuff works, but I just think like as, as a layman, I just look at it the way I, I just said, like, if you could do all those things, why can't you do this? But maybe he's right. Maybe with the current hardware, the software update wouldn't match with that. And it, I don't know, maybe it wouldn't work. I don't, I have no idea, but to me, uh, the algorithm isn't hardware based, it's software based. So that's kind of why I'm thinking, I, I think it can be done. I just think that Kemper has their mind on other things, other priorities. I mean, you're going to make more money by releasing a Kemper stage and a Kemper player than you would upgrading the and updating the algorithm. Uh, maybe that's the way they think. I don't think so. I think that if you update the algorithm, you're going to create a whole new uh, resurgence of the product and a lot of people are going to either switch back to it or else be curious about it or a lot of people might jump on board and say, finally, that's the thing that's been holding me back from buying one. Now I can get one because that cocked wah thing isn't going to happen anymore and it's going to become a better profiling unit. It's going to become more accurate and more consistent. So I'm on board now. So I don't know. There's <laughs> so many ways you can look at it. No matter how you look at it, it definitely needs to be done because that Pro, that profiling algorithm is definitely outdated. It's very old at this point. I mean, as far as tech years go, that algorithm is super old. I mean, you know, tech goes, I mean, in a couple of years, everything's ancient. So we're talking 12 years here, I think. So it definitely needs to be done. And I have high hopes that Kemper will come up with something that will take care of that. Chris Kemper is not an idiot. He's a very smart guy and he's brilliant. So I'm sure it's on his mind and maybe he's already got something in the works and obviously he's not gonna tell us until it's ready, that's the way he does things. But we'll see what happens in the future. All right, this next comment is from Albert Market Think PR 1325. I think that's how you pronounce it. My apologies, public school, you know. Um, he said, I dislike the Fishmen so much. In my opinion, they are the pickup for the I'm offended generation. <laughs> Seymour Duncan passives till the end. Well, thanks for commenting, dude. I appreciate that. You know, uh, I can't stand Fishman pickups, you know, and no offense to them or people who like them. They're just not for me. They're just not. I don't like them. I had a uh, Schecter guitar. It was my first Schecter I bought and uh, came with Fishman's because I wanted to try them. And day one, I hated them. I mean, there were certain amps on my shelves that those pickups did not gel with at all. They sounded really sterile and cold and lifeless. I didn't like the feel and uh, they just had this weird tone to them that just sounded anemic and, and crappy to me and uh, just didn't like them. So I switched that guitar out for uh, the Mach 7, the Banshee Mach 7 with the Lundgren and the uh, Sustaniac. And man, <laughs> best decision ever. Um, so if you like 
Uh, the Fishmans, please don't be offended because of what I'm saying. I mean, if you like what you like, I respect that. They're just not for me. And uh, I just, you know, never got into uh, active pickups because they have too much say over your tone. And the voicing is so strong that you either love it or you hate it, I think. I think that's what it is. Where passives don't have so much say over your tone, if that makes sense. They're kind of, you know, working with your amplifier as opposed to revoicing everything so strongly. So that's just my opinion on active pickups, uh, especially Fishman's. But, you know, it, it's, it's either you love them or you hate them kind of thing. So... Uh, like I said, if you like them, God bless you. I, I'm glad you like them and I'm, I'm glad you enjoy them, but they're just not for me. This next comment is from Guitar Tone SA. And this is on my video that I just did of the Kemper needing to uh, update its algorithm. He said, there's like 10,000 videos on YouTube of high gain amps being profiled perfectly. And there's like 10,000 high gain metal profiles to download that all sound fantastic including Ola England, who did a 2024 profile for his Kemper player review a few weeks ago. Maybe you need to do a software flash on your Kemper. Well, thanks for commenting. I appreciate that. And you're right. There's a lot of great profiles of high gain amps on the, the Kemper out there. And there's a lot of them on my website too, but I, not all these amps are on my website. You know why? Because it doesn't work with all of them. Hell, I just profiled my Friedman JEL on the Kemper the other night just to test some things out on it, and it had that stupid cocked wah sound to it. Maybe I could fix it. Maybe I can't. We'll have to see because I definitely want to profile that and sell those, those profiles. But, you know, there's just issues with it as far as consistency goes. Now, here's the other thing that you maybe haven't thought about, but... Uh, you know, there are a lot of profiles out there of high gain amps that sound good, you know, with the Kemper. There really are. But what did it take to get those to happen? How much manipulation did people have to do regarding uh, making it work with those amps? I mean, did they have to put an EQ in the loop? Did they have to pull their hair out and figure out the perfect mic placement or this or that or just all the little things that they had to do to figure that out? And all these tips and tricks and secrets, they're not going to share that with you. They're just not, you know. Um, and I'm not going to change the integrity of the amplifier by putting an EQ in the loop so that I can profile it and have the Kemper do it right, where the, you know, the definition is in, you know, between 7 and 10 or whatever, you know. I'm just not going to do that. And why should I have to? It, it, it either works or it doesn't, you know. And uh, with the Quad Cortex and the Tonex, I can come down here and profile any one of my amps and they come out perfect every single time. Every single time. And I'm not doing anything to manipulate those units to do it properly. I'm not changing any of the settings on the amps. I'm not throwing EQs in the loop. I'm not tricking it somehow. I just set everything up the way I should do it and it just profiles it perfectly every single time. I don't have any issues with it. And I proved that in that video. I profiled uh the badlander the hot the you know mr scary modded badlander with the kemper came out like shit i profiled it with the quad cortex with the same setting same mic same everything came out perfect so i don't know you tell me and with all things being equal why can one unit do it and the other one can't that's what i'm talking about regarding the whole consistency thing why isn't it consistent it needs to be consistent and I don't know how many more times I have to prove that in, in these videos to uh, get people to realize, but I just, you know, some people just, they're fanboys. They want to defend the product that they spent their money on. And uh, I get that, but I mean, you, you have to understand from my perspective, I'm down here doing these profiles and I'm telling you, dude, uh, you know, the Quad Cortex and the Tonex do it much better and more consistently than the Kemper. Now, that being said, when the Kemper does get along with an amplifier, it does a great job with it. But I honestly, lately with that thing, it's been 50-50 with me, depending on what amp I use. Like the Stealth profiles it perfectly. I have other amps like the Herbert, it's profiled well. The JP, it profiled well. Uh, but I plug into the Friedman half cocked wah sound. I, pro I plug into um, the the Badlander goopy mess when and that's after I modded it. Before I modded it, it uh, profiled it well. That's why I released that pack. But 
Uh, since I modded the Badlander with the Mr. Scary mod, it you know the Kemper doesn't like it anymore. And it's just insane that it can't get along with that amp, but the other units can, which tells me that they need to update it. So you can tell me all day long how many thousands of profiles are out there that sound good. And I'll agree with you, there are. But again, how many manipulations had to be done to get those to come out good? No one's ever going to explain that to you. They're never going to admit any of that stuff. And I can tell you, as somebody who does this for a living, shit gets manipulated. And that's just the way it is. And people got to do what they got to do to get the results that they got to have out of the Kemper. But I'm telling you right now, uh, no one's going to come down here and set up the Kemper to profile, you know, the Badlander and say, oh, you did it wrong because of this. Well, no, I didn't. You know, no one's going to come down here and fix that. It's just not going to happen. So uh, they just need to update the freaking algorithm. And until they do that, I'm pretty much on a hunger strike with the Kemper regarding profiles. I don't want to deal with it anymore. I'm tired of pulling my hair out and going nuts trying to get it to work for me. Again, it works on a lot of amps, but it's just not worth spending my time with right now when I can come down here and have guaranteed great results with Tonex and Quad Cortex. I'd rather spend my time with those for the time being. Okay, so here's another comment from the same video that I did on the Kemper, and this is from DANC3746. He said, I thought it was just me. I agree with you 100%. It is very inconsistent from amp to amp. Plus, it still has that honky mid-range thing going on. I don't even play it anymore. Uh, thanks for commenting. I appreciate that. I mean, there's a lot of people that agree with me in that video. You know, there really are. I like to read comments from people that agree and disagree with me so that I can give you a balanced view of, of things. But, I mean, yeah, he's right. It does kind of have that mid-range honk in some of the amps out there. And uh, I don't understand why it does that, but uh, that's definitely something that's annoying. And sometimes you can get rid of it by you know, moving some things around and maybe changing a knob or mic placement. And sometimes you can't, it's just there because it just interprets things a certain way. And uh, the whole inconsistency thing, I'm not the only guy saying that. There's a lot of people that have said it, you know, and like I said, I'm surprised he hasn't uh, addressed that by now, but hopefully he will. All right, guys, that pretty much does it for this video. Thanks so much for watching, and I appreciate you hearing me out regarding the, uh, the Facebook groups and stuff like that. And please give our new Facebook group a chance. I would really appreciate that very much, and I'm sure John would too. So go ahead and go over there and join the group. Again, the link is in the description of this video. Make sure you watch John's video, which is also linked in the description of this video, and just get a better idea of what he's doing over there and why he decided to start this group. I just think it's a, it's a great idea, and I've really enjoyed being in the group so far. And uh, we're just going to do our best to keep it uh, a friendly place and uh, a place where you can share ideas and not worry about people just talking shit on your posts. I mean, because, you know, the thing is, is like, if that becomes a norm in a group, then people just stop posting because they're afraid someone's just going to start bad mouthing something and, and just mouthing off and just being jerks, you know, and, and nobody wants that, you know, I mean, it just sucks. And, and I, I know we're a bunch of grown ass men, but you know, it's not a thing where we're getting our feelings hurt and we're offended. It's just annoying. You know what I mean? That's really what it comes down to. It's annoying. And man, you get to be in your fifties and your, <laughs> your tolerance for bullshit is pretty much gone. My, my bullshit meter, uh, it, it spikes pretty quick now because I just get sick of it and I won't post because I don't want to deal with it anymore. So uh, I'm glad that John created this group and it's going to be a friendly place where we don't have to worry about that stuff anymore. So I hope to see you guys over there. And uh, again, thank you so much to all the guys who have been purchasing the profile and preset packs. I really appreciate that. And I'm telling you guys, man, the ones I did of the Badlander for the Quad Cortex and the Tonex are special. They're really good and they're very unique and there's, they're like nothing you can ever get out there. I think I'm the only one that's released packs of the modded Badlander so far, as far as I know. And I'm telling you, you guys are going to really like these. The feel is amazing. They're so responsive. 
and so thick. And like I said, you get a lot of different gain levels in them. So pick whatever gain structure you want and enjoy that, you know. So anyways, I want to thank all my Patreon supporters and subscribers. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. You guys really help keep the lights on here as well. And uh, if you're new to the channel and you like what I do here, feel free to subscribe because I got a lot of great stuff coming up for you guys. And I'll see you on the next one.